Hello, lovely people. This is Mark J. Aquaviva, back from retreat in Italy. Um, yeah, sorry, I haven't been here for a couple of weeks. I've been, um, well, I'm not that sorry. I had an amazing time with my partner Abigail in uh, running um, a retreat at Insabina. Lovely people came to it, and it was, um, that was phenomenal. And, um, yes, what else to say? Oh, yes, uh, Diane Long came along midweek and uh, shared her stuff with our students, um, and she was uh, deeply inspiring. And, and then I went and uh, had a couple of days with her on my own um, in her place in Tofia, and uh, I was deeply inspiring, uh, as always. Um, and uh, what, what, what she gave me, um, what she gave me was, well, it's not something I don't know. It's uh, and this is always the way with the show grids. Um, it's not like we don't know stuff, <laughs> but uh, knowing is not it. No, no, no um, it's in the practice. It's simply in the practice. Uh, anyway, uh, the thing that she gave me was uh, around quality of attention, which was, um, which is kind of my byline really it's the it's a it's the thing it's all about as far as i'm concerned and then i go to my teacher and um she shows me um well she shows me my blind spots and helps me uh, find a new degree of quality of attention and I, and I think it's to do with um um what's it to do with my intention i guess because one of my um, one of my intentions in practice is to bring it to bring this yoga to anyone, and uh, including those that have uh, issues in their bodies and that sort of thing. And uh, you know, I see a lot of yoga out there where where people are exercising um, to get strong, inverted commas, around diff their difficulties, and it sort of it sort of works, but it's it's kind of um, so it's a kind of bandaging up, if you like. Um, and this thing, this other thing that is that seems very different, um, is an entirely different approach uh, that is not really corroborated corroborated by the rest of the yoga world. It's 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 simply about removing complications in the things that we do, and the outcome can be healing for that issue you see now what i got from diane she's not she's not interested in doing that um it's a side uh, she sees that kind of healing as a side effect of uh, for those that are willing to go deep into the practice and and she's right you know um it, it takes a, a willingness to go deep into the practice and i think what i do is i try and um hi kishori um, I try and draw people in that would otherwise miss the value of the practice uh, because of their issues. And um, hi, Jan, nice to see you. Um, and I, and I, want to, I want to open up the world of yoga to these to these people and show that there is a way out that doesn't involve um, the the no pain no gain thing. You know, um, <clears throat> so that's my mission. Um, but it's about. Quality, quality of attention, and, and whether you have something to deal with or not, the, the having something to deal with is a, is a way into the yoga, but it's the yoga, and if there's nothing particular to deal with, quality of attention is precisely what is needed for the yoga experience. And that's what I come back with, was this, um, you know, I, I, I've extricated myself from uh, most of my physical issues, and sometimes they come back when I'm when I'm a bit stressed or something. But um, pay, giving myself the time to be in holy communion in relationships between parts of myself, um, checking in with the quality of my actions in relationship to the quality of my experience. You know? It's it's these relationships that um, lead to the yoga. So anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to say. There's so much gold to be had if we can just slow down, take out the 
the sort of artificial goal of getting the posture um, because that, that leads to the exercise mentality and and use approach to what we do simply to investigate this incredible um, experience scape <laughs> this this incredible field of of uh, what can happen when we apply the principles of non-conflict and um, beauty in the quality of our actions how the body can respond to these things and a byproduct of those things is that that hip issue that knee that whatever it is that um, you've been walking around with vanishes in the practice and it is it's this this relationship to yourself that leads to the vanishing so you know if you, if you treat it as an exercise then perhaps you can vanish the issue whilst you're exercising perhaps i don't, I don't see much evidence of that to be honest um but uh, if if you're if you're using your yoga to become to to refine the relationships between important parts of yourself, you know your spine, your your your, your organs, your breathing, and the use of your limbs in the world, these things change your life. And uh, yes, I think um, oh well. Uh, yoga for other reasons is fine, but um, I love it enough to use it for the, this purpose. Anyway, okay, so here we go. Um, oh, I have a question from Alan. I am pondering grounding without heaviness and spaciousness without floatiness. Okay, that's um, that's actually quite a relevant question um, to my theme. Grounding without heaviness spaciousness without floatiness. Well, the first thing we need to do is define what these things are. Um, <clears throat> grounding, uh, I'm not quite sure what he means by without floatiness. Uh, so if you, if you can expand upon that, uh, no, no, that'd, be, that'd be helpful. Um, but grounding without heaviness, that's, that's an easy one. <sighs> I think the issue with, um, with grounding, verticomers, is that it's interpreted as heaviness. We're instructed to give, um, give our weight down. Um, so w what is the experience of heaviness? Well, and let's get this angled right. <laughs> You'll notice I'm still in my garden. I, I'm such a outdoor obsessive. I, it's, it's kind of cold. I was really happy this morning when the sun came out, which is why I said I'd do this live. And then, then it got grey and I got terrified because <laughs> I wanted to uh, be outside. But anyway, it's come out for me. So where, where was I? Grounding without heaviness. Heaviness is something that we experience. Okay, It's an experience that happens in our bodies. Where does it happen? It happens if we feel heavy, it's because we're giving our weight to our joints. If we feel heavy, it's because we're giving our weight to our joints. If we feel heavy, it's because we're giving our weight to our spines, okay? This is not groundedness. This is hanging off the body. This is hanging your weight off your bones and joints, off your structure. So the structure is left carrying your weight. That is not groundedness, it is precisely the opposite. Okay, groundedness is that which occurs when your weight can be given to the ground. So I could go into the structure of it, I could go into the um, description of lines of forces through your bones and joints and we can get quite mechanistic with it. Um, just take that as red, if, if that made sense to you that grounding is something that happens when we can divest our weight into the ground, and that is a structural question, perhaps, alignments of forces and support, then how do we get there? How, how, do, we, how do we get grounding that is not heavy? Well, well, you don't give the weight to your joints. You give, you give it to your touch. But before that, you need a relationship to your touch 
that has this quality that I'm talking about. You know? If I'm going to stand on a foot without feeling heavy, without feeling heavy, I need to have a, a quality of engagement with my touch that really listens into how gentle, how gently I can, how, how gently I can tread. Uh, as if I'm, I'm walking in a forest or something and I, and I don't want to make a leaf, make a sound. I don't want to crack any twigs. I don't want to crush a leaf. So to do that, I have to have a relationship to my touch that is so spacious where there's no particular weight going down, as if I'm reluctant. And as I approach, in order to keep that lightness, I will quite naturally engage with the whole of my body, through my core, through my spine, and into space, to try and not crush the earth beneath me. The result will be more space, more space in my joints. The result, the, the technical result, the structural result is there is less heaviness in my joints. Okay? But the engagement, the quality of engagement is in listening to the gentleness of my touch and being wholeheartedly concerned with not being violent to it in any way. So that the whole of me, my core, my spine, my breathing, my relationship to space is such that when I release down from above through myself, through my spine, it will be through a structure that has organized itself in a way that has no weight in any particular joint. So grounding is not heaviness. Grounding involves being spacious enough to be able to give your weight to where you touch the ground. That involves your relationship to space. So I'm guessing what, um, what you mean by um, spaciousness without floatiness, Alan, um, is probably this function of lifting yes um, because we can quite easily lift with our spines we can quite easily lift with our joints um, to give ourselves the sensation of openness and and it's not openness it's it's forwardness it's forwardness and it's at the expense of the spine um, and it's easy to get used to that feeling and feel, feeling like that, that is a strength of sorts, you know. Um, the, the floaty feeling is that it's got nothing to do with the ground beneath you because you're essentially sort of holding yourself up and then um, holding yourself in space. And uh, floatiness, I don't know. Um, that's not my experience of holding myself up. It, it feels tense and artificial. Um, to feel spacious without floatiness, I guess, um, obviously the same stuff, your support has to come from the ground. You have to develop the spaciousness from the ground up. And how do I do that? Well, yes, I find a kindness in my touch. And uh, you can play with the structural thing as the inner, inner touch, the inner foot, the outer touch, and then as the heel falls away from me, um, I create space behind myself as well. So there's the inner touch from which I can have space along the inside. There's the outer touch from which I can have... Um, there's the outer touch from which I can have space along the outside. And then there's the heel of the touch from which I'm, I can allow space behind me. So just from my quality of touch, I can create space away from the touch. That's what it's designed for. Um, but if I want to truly feel spacious up here, then my engagement needs to be with space 
from that. Um, responsive support. It needs to be with space. So I have to take my attention out of all this inside stuff and out of all this down stuff and into where I am in space and engage with it in a way that gives me space. Gives me space so that so that from space, if I use space, what does that mean? Um, it means engaging with it in a way as if space was a surface. So that's one of my tricks. Uh, if, I, if I imagine I'm wrapped in cling film and I can meet that surface, I think it's a way of um, being the space, you know. But that physical engagement with space, as if it's a surface, what does that do? It gives me support back through my bones, back through my breathing, back through my spine, to where I can drop the weight through my face. So how do I feel spacious without feeling floaty? I feel spacious if I use space to find the earth through my spine and breath. I feel grounded if I use my touch to find space through me so that I can release away from my touch, inner, outer, heel, into space. I feel grounded if I use my space to find support back through my bones and spine and breath to my touch. I feel spacious if I use my touch to find space through me, inner, outer, and heel, so that I can release out into the space around me. <laughs> and the result is uh, freedom. So, so the answer, Alan, is they're not different things. The answer is, is my third solution, if you like. I have these conditions that I work with. Uh, one of them is groundedness. Another is spaciousness. The third one is the answer to those, to the cohen of those first two. How can I be grounded and spacious? Well, the answer is you use your ground to find space, and you use your space to find the ground. And when you when you work with those those things, when you work with those things, when I use space to find the ground, and when I use the ground to find space, if I can be doing those things together, what do I find? I find my center. And there's a, there's a gathering together from space through the center to the earth. And there's a gathering together from the earth through the center to space. Uh, that being the third condition means it's something you can actually directly engage with, which is a bit of a trick. How do I do these two things at once? It's quite simple. Here's my hands in space. Here's my feet and base on the ground, um, underneath the cat. <laughs> what I do is from those things, I find my center. And then from my center, I release into ground and space. The, the center, what is that? There's the center of breathing, there's the center of gravity. Um, I like to place that roughly around the solar plexus or the heart, ideally. If it's in the spine behind the heart, then if you can bring your center of gravity, as in your relationship to space and your relationship to the earth, centered in this place, then the result of that, well, those things, the directions of engagement of, um, yes, those directions of engagement unify in the release of the breath through the spine. And the result is the <clears throat> rounded past the spine in the back 
elongates a little, which is the experience of getting taller and the spine elongating as you let go of tension. So, <clears throat> so thank you, Alan, for that question. That's the uh, entirety of my work summed up in 10 minutes. <laughs> um, perfect. So, um, yes, okay. Um, that, that's about it, really. Uh, I'm only supposed to do uh, 20 minutes on these things, I think. So, um, <clears throat> oh, hi, Sally. I didn't see you there. Um, nice to see you. Uh, so I'll, I'll be back next Tuesday with the uh, regular Tuesday uh, Yoga Solutions Live. I wanted to jump online today because the sun came out this morning and um, and I uh, and I wanted to share some stuff whilst I was directly back from retreat. Uh, next, yes, next week. Uh, um, oh, hi, Jen. It's a pleasure, pleasure, my dear. Um, next week, um, yes, I'll, I'll do another one on Tuesday, and then I'm away again on retreat, on a meditation retreat after that. So um, I think I think it's just one week um, missing after that. So um, I am Mark J Aquaviva um, of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Come and see me uh, at a workshop. Uh, oh, you can you can come to um, uh, Twickenham this weekend. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching up at Heart in Twickenham. Or if you if you want um, to work with Abigail, Abigail Peck, she's running a pelvic health workshop for women only in Brighton. Um, that's got to be it's got to be worth a, a go if you, if you, if you're a woman uh, and you have a pelvis. It's good. Um, book book on for that. Go and get take the opportunity to work with Abigail. She she does these once in a while. These these um, CPD type workshops, but um, you don't need to be a teacher to to go. It's it's uh, it'll help you with um, any any um, pelvic issues, but women only, I'm afraid. So, uh, boys, you have to come see me. Okay, uh, thank you. Namaste. I shall see you next Tuesday. <laughs>